Around the turn of the millennia, I acquired a PC game. It was a disc essentially containing 100 trial games. It kept me entertained, even though about 90% of them were complete garbage. However, that disc was probably one of the most important I ever picked up. It contained the trial version of a game known as Jazz Jackrabbit 2. I loved it. I played it for months. The same through levels over and over and over and over and over again. And, though, and so finally, I think it was about three months later, my dad was finally able to hunt me down a copy of the game that I've always wanted. And I was not disappointed. I played it for hours every day. It was one of the greatest games I ever played, and to this day, it's still one of my favorite games of all time. The Jazz Jackrabbit community is something else. I always say the Counter-Strike community is the most devoted community out there, but I think the JJ2 community is about there as well. Despite the game being over 10 years old, the community is still thriving. On Jazz 2 Online, new levels are constantly being uploaded and the forums are still very active. The community has come up with many different programs and updates for the game, such as Jazz Sprite Dynamite, which lets you view the game's animations, JJ2 Plus, which is a great update that fixes many glitches and completely revamps the multiplayer, and recently, Violet CLM has created a program called MLLE. MLLE stands for Multi-Layer Level Editor, and it was the original editor before Jazz Creation Station. Its only known existence was two screenshots that were found on the internet, but it's here, and it lets you edit the OME or beta versions of Jazz Jackrabbit 2. The beta versions have been around for a while, but nonetheless offer some interesting insight on the development of the game. And that's what this next project is going to be about. Welcome to my new Let's Play of... Hey everybody, it's Kia Koopas here, and welcome to my new Let's Play of Jazz Jackrabbit 1.00G, which is essentially the first beta version of the game that surfaced over the years. I haven't seen this list on YouTube, so I'm going to do this. This is going to be a little bit more of an informative Let's Play. I'm going to go over, you know, things that were changed from this version to the final release, which was 1.23. And yeah, I'm going to, you know, provide tidbits of information, trivia, stuff like that. Pretty much show off as much as I know about the game. And, you know, provide something different. First thing, something I need to point out, for some reason I'm getting really weird visual glitches in the game. I'm not really sure why. And for some reason my, uh, my frames right now are getting raped. I'm not really sure why. Anyhow, first thing is you know the uh, main menu is radically different. It spins a lot faster and there's a lot, it's a lot trippier. <laughs> I'll flash up on the top right corner of the screen. This let's play is kind of going to assume that either you never played the final version or you don't know much about the final version. So yeah, excuse me for all those diehard jazz fans who know a lot about the game, but I'm going to be repeating a lot. So yeah. Anyhow, first things first. If you go into videos, you can see this. Like, very few video options available. Kind of a little bit interesting bit of tidbit of information. Uh, same thing with sound and controls. These are the controls if you want to take a look. Okay, there you go. In case for some reason you don't know the controls, it's very easy to play. So anyhow, we're going to start off with episode 1, formerly a prince. But before we do that, I uh, have something to say. First of all, we're going to be doing... I'm going to be playing as Jazz, because Jazz is my preferred character. I just like his helicopter ears, and I'm going to play through on medium, but we're going to start out with easy here, and you'll see why in a sec. One more thing you may notice is some uh, really weird visual glitches. This is due to Fraps and trying to record a really old game. Unfortunately, I cannot fix that. I do not know what's causing it, so hopefully they're not too, too distracting. But as you may be probably wondering, what the heck is this thing? Well, this is the Spring Chord event. If you played the um, original game and used Jazz Creation Station, you know that Spring Chord is an event that doesn't really do, well, it doesn't really doesn't do anything, period. But in the beta version, you actually get something if you place the event using MLLE, or in this case, a hex editor. And as you can see, it pretty much confirms what we thought it was. It was um, kind of like a bungee cord. It follows you around, it doesn't really do anything, unfortunately. But, you can shoot it. Other than that, that's pretty much all there is to say about this. You can do a few things, like you can freeze it, then it disappears. In fact, I'll show you that. I'm just going to give myself ammo, and you can see here. If you freeze it, it disappears, and it doesn't come back. 
anyhow, yeah. That's about all I have to say about that. We're gonna go back to medium and we're gonna go ahead and go to the game. I don't wanna go over here because the hex editor messed up the level a little bit. But other than that, let's, let's go. Starting off episode one of Formerly a Princess, you probably noticed the loading screen is very different from the final game. This is now the Devon thing where the, yeah. You know, I'll flash up a, a corner what it looks like in the final game if you don't know. And the second thing you'll notice here, if you look, the gems are very different from the final game. They um, look a lot more cartoony, I have to say. Again, I'll flash up in this corner what they look like in the final game in case you don't know. So yeah, let's get going here. Enough of the trivia, let's play this freaking game. I've been... I've played this game for so many years, I know where most of the secrets are. I don't know where all of them are. But I'm just going to attempt to show off as much as I know about the game. Engine-wise, game-wise, trivia-wise, and stuff like that. Second thing, you know another thing that's changed. You can pick up carrots, even if you're at full health in this version. This is bouncer ammo, in case you don't know. It bounces around, not that useful to be honest, but if you're going to go to the corner. And you go up here, there's a warp. You get a 15 minute and a fast fire. It functions just like in the fin final game, fast fire makes it so that your gun you don't need to keep pressing the fire button. So yeah, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna go here. Again, hopefully these visual glitches aren't too too bad, but I can't fix them, so just gonna have to put up with them unfortunately. Thankfully, I don't think they're that noticing when the action is zooming around. The little dragon. I kind of wish they kept that from the uh, final game, where you can um, pick up carrots even if you're at full health, because I just like collecting items. But I can see how that would have caused problems over here. You can get a full carrot that completely restores your health and gives you temporary invincibility. As you can probably saw, the invincibility um, uh, little sprite around you is a little different than this in the final game. Oh, before we go on, something else I want to show off. In the final game, if you take bouncer ammo or even the bubble ammo, ammo ammo as it's called, and you fire it, like if you go really fast and fire at the wall, it goes through the wall actually. But in this game, as you can see, you can't do that in this game, and that's really weird. For some reason, the engine of this game seems a lot more stable, and you can't abuse it nearly as much as you can in the final game. However, it also is kind of glitchy. For example, you can't uh, push up frozen objects for some reason. That's really weird. I don't know why. Once I get if I, uh, get an opportunity to show that off, I will. Anyhow, there's a one up there in case you need it. You should know because this game is really easy. An avid player of um, uh, platformers should have no problems blowing through this game, even on the hardest difficulty. For some reason, he's stick there. I'm not really sure why. Then he helps me down here. Collect more gems, not really much to show. Uh, I guess well there really isn't much to talk about. There's a gem stomp around here somewhere. Somewhere. Over here. Come on. There it is. If you, if you don't know what gem stomp is basically a place where you can butt stomp and get a bunch of gems. I don't know where like any of them are in the game, so I'm not gonna show them all because I never really bothered looking for them. They're not really worth it. Because gems are just for points, so, yeah. Anyhow, something you might want to know. In the um, animation file, there's actually an, there's actually animations and sprites for a rectangular gem. The event for rectangular gems can still be found in the um, uh, Jazz Creation Station in the final game. However, they just spawn regular gems and not the rectangular ones. I'm going to flash up in the corner what they are. In case you want to see what they look like. They're... Yep. Anyhow, we're just going to go ahead. Springs seem a little more glitchy, I didn't know that. Yeah, you can actually stand between them in this version. Pretty easily, might I say. And yeah, let's go over here. Go up here, a little bit of a secret, a one-up, but you don't you need to shoot, you shouldn't need it. So yeah, what I'm gonna do for this video, I'm gonna show the first two levels. I'm gonna go slowly, show off as much as I can. And I think I'm gonna, you know, do like two levels of video, I think, depending on the length. You know, I'd rather have, you know, shorter parts than really long parts. Maybe we got enough coins. This is a hip hop hill fire for you. And look at that. We got a power up. You won't you can't see it now, but in this game you can actually go above 99 ammo. In the final game you're locked at that. And there's a secret here somewhere right there. You can get up there. Unfortunately, I seem to be stupid. I cannot get up there. There we go. But yeah, in this game you can go above 99 ammo like you could in the original game. So yeah. A little bit interesting thing there. Again, it makes collecting a lot funner. Get more points. 
Because, yeah, I mean, who doesn't like getting a high score? There's some enemies here. Cut the fast fire. As you can see, we're starting to fire a little faster by putting it down, so. And this is the end of the level. Interesting little thing that's in the final game as well. If you collect above 100 gems, it stops counting for some reason. And yay, level 2, Night Cap. Again, not many really changes to really speak of. Well, all the levels are pretty much identical in terms of the layout. And most of it is just really, you know, engine changes and sprite changes. Which are nonetheless interesting, but... Still. Anyhow, these blocks need bouncer. As you haven't noticed yet, bouncer ammo, the powered up, goes a lot farther and lasts for a lot longer in this game than in the final. Or in this version. <laughs> As you can see here, over 100 ammo. I'm not sure if there is a cap, I haven't played around with it, but I'm sure. Using MLLE, I can find it, see if there's actually a cap on it. Well, if I find out anything, I'll be sure to post, post about it in a later video. And there's actually some freaking coins up here. They go up here. Don't go down, that's a hard path. If you go this way, you can get a, get a power up, so you want to be going this way, of course. Now, the de wait, going down is just, you know, I don't know. It's just in case you really want to run into bats that bad, and those things are annoying. They're not hard to kill, they're just annoying. Anyhow, here we go, we got Icer. This doesn't do damage, but instead freezes your enemies. If we use it on this bat here, as you can see, the freezing animation is a lot um, a lighter than it is in the final game. I'll flash up what it looks like in the final game over in the corner, of course. If we do an uppercut here, uppercut here, in case you don't know, you hold down and press jump. And there we go. We got ice power up. Kind of a glitch, like, you know, from 1.23, it only fires in one direction. It's supposed to fire off in, like, two different directions, but I don't know why it took it out anyway here. Freeze. Go here. There's a little area over there that you can go, but I'm not going to go that way because I don't want to waste too much time here. I mean, because I have a lot to say about this global still, especially the boss is going to eat up quite a bit of time. Actually, no, not really, but still, I mean, two minutes, a minute and a half, that's still quite a bit of time, so let's go down. Another difference you're going to notice here, Sugar Rush, for some reason, it doesn't have music. You can still find the music, I mean, but it doesn't show up here. Not sure why, I guess it's just, um, uh... Another glitch from the beta. And yeah, we go over here. And here we go, up here, some gems and a one-up and a full energy carrot. Just go this way. For those of you, if you don't know, if you um, take the warp and uh, there's any coins left in the level to alter in the gems, like for example, this was a five uh, a gold coin, which is worth five. So let's go over here. And here we have the instance of a gem ring. Now, gem rings are very interesting in this game because in the final game, if you try and freeze a gem ring, for some reason, it gives you an access violation because there's no sprite for a frozen gem ring. I, th I believe that's why. An access violation is pretty much like this game's version of a crash to desktop that but gives you an error. Look what happens if you try and freeze one in um, uh, 1.00G. Yeah, that's trippy, ain't it? As far as I know, there's no way to fix this, so it doesn't, you know... You can still complete the level, it just makes it harder because you can't see what you're doing. But I know what to do. We go down here. Isn't that trippy though? That is really interesting. I guess because it doesn't have like a, a, a sprite in this game, I guess it just freezes a large area because it doesn't know what else to do. Oh, there we go. It's gone now. I guess once you get to a certain air, range it disappears. If you don't know, I believe gem rings give you 10 gems, so yeah. Up here is the only instance in the game of um, the, uh, the helicopter ears. Kind of interesting. I believe the, uh, but most of these bats aren't here in the final game, so it's another interesting thing. One up down there if you need it. You shouldn't need it, though. Up here, you can see Jesus Green on Tuesday. There's a lot of, like, little timbits there. And here, we have an instance of a boss, which is the Queen. In this game, the boss is acting a little differently. Instead of activating when you get to, um, uh, an activate boss event, they activate when you get within 34 squares, or blocks, of the boss, I believe. Anyhow, the boss plays pretty much exactly like it does in the final game, just... Shoot it. It has a life bar, but the life bar doesn't do anything really, so I'm not going to attack. I wanted to show off its attack here. I don't believe it does the attack when you fire. Come on, do your attack. 
I believe it is possible. Oh, here we go. As you can see in this game, a lot more bricks fall. It's a lot harder to dodge. I'm gonna use my balancer ammo. As you can see, I think you can drain the boss's health bar. It's just you need you need a lot of stuff. And and the queen actually hurts you. I don't believe she hurts you in the final game. Wow, apparently. Oh shit, am I am I die here? I'm gonna be disappointed in myself. Come on. Okay, yeah, that, that attack is really hard to dodge with. That's probably why they nerfed it, because they're, this is the first boss and already you're, you're having problems. Oh, I guess if you drain the boss's health all the way, she just automatically goes to the end. Interesting. In the final game, it doesn't have a, has a health bar, and yeah. You don't get to see the little um, uh, bricks falling in, you do. And that's all there is to say about that. In the next episode, we're going to start Toss Salad. And again, we're going to start... I'll do some more timbits of information about this, from what I know. And yeah, we'll, we'll get going on Caritas. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.